Howdy guys, Attorney Walter not now. We are live and this is the big Thursday event where I go live and answer questions for people who randomly call in. The phone number is 407-279-1754. Remember, we're starting right now at 9.06 p.m. And we'll probably go into about 10 p.m. And we do this every single Thursday. We'll usually do an intro video, and then we'll go into the video where we basically answer questions uh, live. Now, with that said, there were a lot of people this week who sent me messages through the website that I have not been able to respond to all of them. Uh, all the ones that were like, okay, this is a potential new client for the law firm. We had back office staff and myself reach out to them. However, the ones that were like random questions about what happens with this or what do I do with that or what blah, 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 those I haven't gotten all back to. I will be trying to get back to those over the next couple of days. I'll probably get back to them all Friday being tomorrow. With that said, the way this works, when you call in the 407-279-1754 phone number, when you call in, the way it works is uh, you basically go ahead and use a fake name. And then I'll say, hey, do you want me to answer a question? Do you want me to run hearing questions with you? And you'll say, hey, I want you to answer this question. Or I would like you to run hearing questions with me because my hearing is around the corner. Yeehaw. All right. So with that said, as we go through this process, we're going to try and keep the videos to a total of five minutes, only five minutes per call, unless it's running hearing questions. Then it takes a little bit longer than that. Now, uh, with that said, we are now going to begin. I'm going to set the phone up. I'm going to put the number in the chat section area, the 407-279-1754. Uh, oops, I did a little 279-1754. Perfect. Excellent. Let me get the phone ready. And what we're going to do is, okay, perfect. We have the first caller coming in right now. I'm putting it on, uh, what the heck happened there? I just put it on speaker and it killed the phone call. All right, let's try this next one. Okay, perfect. Hi, we are live on YouTube. Please remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Now, uh, would you like me to run hearing questions with you, or would you like me to go ahead and, uh, and uh, answer a specific question? Uh, I have a specific question. Perfect, sir. How can I help you? Um, I saw the vehicle, and I wasn't thinking at the time. I'm on uh, supplemental supplemental. Uh, uh, the SSI part of um, disability. Okay. So and something else, security income, and you sold a vehicle. Gotcha. So I sold it to uh, this website. It's called Pedal, mm -hmm. and they only gave me, like, not even what the market value was, and I'm concerned that maybe um, they, uh, Social Security might use that against me like a transfer of funds i think it's called mm -hmm. um i gave them the receipt and everything um i just want to know what i can do to make sure that everything's good so basically you sold a vehicle and you're worried about the money you got from it being potential issue when it comes to earning too much uh potential issue of you know having over the uh, the ink or the, uh, the, the resource limit. How much did you sell it for? Uh, $800. All right. So you're not going to violate anything with the $800. I mean, they, they it, and they probably won't see that necessarily because you're not in the business of doing this, but you know, they probably will. And I don't know the exact deal. You know, I have to be careful with these situations because I don't know the exact contract terms, you know, whether or not you sold it to them within the business of selling this thing and blah, blah, blah. And they, they had to sign something that is words a certain way, but for the most part, you know, this is not you working and having earned income. So what you're really looking at is resource limit, but you should be okay. Cause you're under the $2,000 resource limit. Okay. Even though the vehicle was valued at more, I mean, it, there was a lot of problems with it and I just needed to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So it was valued for probably about, like four thousand, mm -hmm. the current market value. But there was, I mean, there was so many problems. I don't know if they would understand that, or um, would I still be all right, even though it was that much the the mar market value for it. What you're supposed to do, yeah, what you're supposed to do when you sell something like that is to outline essentially what's wrong with it, but you shouldn't worry about it too much because the moment they get that car, most of these car places will put it through a point inspection where they go through all the little points to see what it has as issues, what needs to be fixed right away before they can sell it, yada, yada. So what I would say is this, um, you can always get a copy of their review of the car thereafter where they did their point analysis review. And that will give you the evidence you need to show that it was not in tip top shape worth the four grand, but significantly less. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, good sir. You have a wonderful, wonderful night, and uh, we'll catch up in the not too distant future. And I'm looking forward to hear, hearing about your new car in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you, good sir. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. We are live on YouTube. How can I help you? And please remember to use a fake name throughout this process. And can I answer a specific question for you, or would you like to run hearing questions? I want to question. Sure, go for it. Um, <clears throat> I'm having disability review, mm -hmm. and my um, review, my diagnosis is for um, schizophrenia, and I haven't had a, um, a appointment with any providers relevant to my disability for since right after the COVID started. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing for me to give them for reviewing. Um, what do I do? <laughs> so what they're going to do is they'll send you to what's called, you know, basically CE appointments. CE appointments are consultative examination, medical appointments. That's why they send you to a medical expert, an ME medical expert. The medical experts on the SSA side, we do tend to get a lot of biased results back on those. So you have to be very careful. So you want to immediately start going to your doctors to counter the statements that are being made by their doctors when they send you to their doctors. Another thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, as you go through that process, you want to have basically as strong a medical evidence on your side because ultimately they take your medical doctor's testimony, you know, in the, in the reports and the medical uh, experts testimony that they sent you to on behalf of the SSA. And then they send that all to what's called an MC, a medical consultant. A medical consultant is an individual that reviews all the medical documentation and puts a little report together that goes into what's called the DDE, the Disability Determination Explanation. That uh, explanation is what DDS uses to figure out whether or not you meet the medical severity requirements. So the bottom line here is first thing you got to do is immediately get treatment. And if you have crisis treatment situations in your near future, that would be very, very helpful, like emergency rooms, uh, mental facility for multiple days inpatient. Those would be very, very helpful for a claim like this if you are experiencing uh, critical medical treatment needs. I'm currently in a skilled nursing facility and it's for physical things, but I haven't, I don't have a regular uh, mental health provider. I haven't been able to get with one since the COVID starts. Mm -hmm. So since you're in a, a, a facility that, okay, so let's, let's go through the basics here. Do you, uh, you know, distribute to yourself and take on your own, your own medication or does somebody assist you with that? They give it to me. Okay. And when you go do your daily exercises, your wake up, go get food, do you cook your own food there or no? No, this is a skilled nursing facility and not an assisted living. Okay. So now our viewers might not know what that is. Um, give them a quick mini definition. So skilled nursing facility is where they do all those things. Um, assisted living is where you have basically your own apartment and they come in and give you help with things you don't need, that you don't. You can, okay. You can't do, and but you can live like it's your own place. You know, with apartment restrictions, you can't put holes in the walls and hang up pictures and stuff. You gotta use command hook and like that. So, I, I, skilled nursing facility, they yeah. come and they check your um, vitals three or four times a day and they come in and check on you at night and they give you bed baths if you can't get in the shower and they give you showers if you can't do it yourself and there's always a call button with the nurse on the other end and go into the uh the cleaning go into the laundry go into 
uh, basically, you know, hobbies and things like that, how they have you interact with things. Go into that real quick. Yeah. And they, um, they either you get the facility to do your laundry or somebody has to come pick it up and do it for you. Um, and they take you to therapy, physical therapy, and they take you to occupational therapy and to um, socialization and groups. And you go and they get you up in the morning and, and when you go to bed at night, they, they give you your pills and you don't get to take them when you want to, they, unless that's in the orders from the doctor. And I forgot what else you wanted me to say about them. So here's the thing. You did a, an amazing job outlining that skilled facility. Um, now, with that said, um, one thing you only have to watch out for when it comes to those facilities is that in their medical notes about your abilities, they'll usually talk about all of the benefits of your improvement as a result of their therapeutic assistance. And you just have to watch out with those notes because, you know, it, the, the, a lot of them are covered by insurance. And as a result of that, insurance wants to see improvement. So just as a heads up, um, you know, get some outside of that facility medical treatment. That way you have something to bolster the fact that you need them to, to function on a daily basis for them to do all of those residual functional capacity, call them what you will, chores, daily activities, whatever. Yeah. So uh, the physical thing is not what my, um, my, my, I'm allowed to tell you these things, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can talk about schizophrenia, the delusions, hallucinations, how they help with that. Go for, you go for it, yeah. So they don't do anything about that in the skilled facility, in the skilled nursing facility. <laughs> Even here, I haven't talked to anybody about that, and the only person I've talked with about that is, um, well, I, I send messages to myself. Mm -hmm. Sure. About when, when they're... Because I can't talk to the people. They don't have somebody to talk to here about that, I think. And so there's no um, no improvement or such. I mean, all they can talk about is how my wounds are healing up. And if I, if I take out the catheters and stuff and... Um, and those things so they don't know they don't ask about except for if i have a bad mood or if i'm feeling like i'm gonna hurt myself again so um and here's the thing um keep in mind what they put in the notes is that you know you have a positive mentality you're interacting appropriately with the uh with the nurses or the case managers things like that you just have to watch out for phrases that show mental capacity improvement but other than that good sir that was an excellent excellent walkthrough as to what that facility offers do you have any additional questions for me before we pop over to the next caller um they want to do my review in just three days and i don't have and then the, and they're also kicking me out of the facility because my wound i can walk now without a walker but they're putting me with a home care gotcha 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 Can, is there a way to delay because it's been almost a year they've been sending me notes and there were on the back of the uh, on the back of the envelope it says scam alert and so i didn't open it because it was a scam well, usually on the envelopes, but they said it wasn't a scam. Yeah, they'll put a scam alert on the envelopes. Like we get, like we get tons of SSA mail, and it always says on the envelope, "Be be wary of potential scams. Watch out for scams." Blah 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 blah. Um, right. So but, I didn't open it. Oh, you got to open those. So important. I didn't know what they said. They were scams. No, no. So they're the. I mean, if it says scam alert or potential, you know, or be wary of scam. Like you know, I, I wish I had the. I wish I had the mailbox next to me where I, I audit the mail that we get every week um, from back office in the mail room. But um, bottom line, good sir, um, you got to open them and review them and read them and see what they are. Because if they're from Florida Health or they're from the SSA, 
you got them. They weren't. They were. They weren't from those kind of people. Oh, if they were definitive scams, scams, then you're good. But just be careful because the SSA envelopes will have scam information on the back of them as well, trying it to did. warn you. Yeah. It did, but on the on the address, it wasn't the Social Security, and it wasn't the Department of Workforce Services, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't recognize it at all. And so, and it said scam alert, and sometimes there's signs other places. You know, there's signs when I go to the store. There's signs, and and some people don't know they're there. So, oh yeah, and I hear you. It sounds like you've got a pretty good idea as to what to check for to see if it's a, a scam envelope or not. But the SSA uh, letters, most of them have a notification on the outside of them because you know one of the largest pools of money that you know gets scammed are you know the transition of money from the U.S. Treasury for SSA recipients, beneficiaries, and they get scammed out of their check. And that's what the SSA is so worried about because it's, it's millions, literally millions worth of scams each year. But um, anyways, good, sir. I'm going to pop to the next caller. Thank you okay. so much for calling. In. I will catch you a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So I just wanted to take a moment and scroll up real quick uh, to combat ready who donated $50. That's absolutely incredible. Um, thanks for all the information, Walter. VA, PNT case approved in 53 days. SSDI is moving fast. Very nice. Excellent. That's awesome. I'm really pleased to hear that. Um, actually, so here's the deal, too. I have to get my videos completed and sent over to Combat Craig because my promise to him was that once I got this house thing finished, he would move in the video area of what I do to the very top. So above what I'm doing with my live show and stuff like that, I'm going to go and finish his videos because I just need about like two to three hours worth of edit time on them just to finish them. But I was like keeping the YouTube channel up, but with the house and the law firm and the YouTube channel, I just didn't have enough time. But tomorrow is Combat Craig Day where I'm getting his videos uh, completed to send about uh, kind of the things that are going on. And I'm sending him new video ideas that I would love to get his side of the coin on uh, with how everything's going. So with that said, let's take the next call real quick. Here we go. Okie doke. Perfect. We are on speaker. Hi, this is attorney Walter Knott. We are live. Remember to go ahead and uh, mute uh, the computer on your end. Perfect. Now, um, we are live. I remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Um, would you like me to answer a specific question or would you like me to run hearing questions with you? Uh, this is Christopher. I'll do both of you uh, if you're game. Perfect. Go for it. What's the question? Okay, my, my uh, question is, um, I have a TBI uh, from falling down a flight of stairs mm -hmm. about a year ago and getting knocked out, mm -hmm. and they got a lot of medical problems anyhow, so it just all got better. Um, my concussion physician actually recommended an attorney who is real expert, I guess, in this area. Sure. Uh, so it just all started in January. Um my first question is, does Social Security go into our, our, like, how much money do they give, if you get too much money in the bank, do you, does that go against you, or do yeah. you draw it down? For SSI, it counts against you, $2,000 limit. For SSDI benefits, it doesn't go against you, and it's totally fine. Uh, but yes, they can see directly into your bank account and see how much you have. Uh, it takes them like 30 seconds usually to look it up on the computer, same kind of gig. Uh, with essentially looking up what vehicles you have with the DMV. Yeah, I got, I got a 15, 2015 Honda and an old one Ford Ranger that's falling apart. But uh, the money in the bank account, you know, my checking, should we keep that below a level? Or? Well, I mean, look, you know, you got to keep in mind, are you going for SSI or SSDI? This is SSDI. Yeah, then don't worry about it. There's no resource limit with how much you can have in the bank. Yeah, so I mean, and there's no car limit. You could have 15, you know, Ford Escapes that are falling apart. Um, in fact, the Ford you have has to be falling apart. Otherwise, it's not cool. So, you know, the bottom line is, uh, yeah, you know how that is. <laughs> so, but, uh, hey, hey, yeah, uh, I'm I still... I like my tractor better, though. That's, man, let me tell you, me loves, me loves me Kubota. My, my in-cab Kubota, oh, she's old. She's an old girl, but me loves me Kubota. I love my F-352. I do. 7.3 diesel dual. You can't beat that, but me loves <laughs> that Kubota. Oh, I used it a couple of times uh, over the past week. I mean, just uh, we actually replaced the two front tires on it 
uh, today. I was running out in between client calls, uh, basically helping with, and we use the bucket to lift the front tires up, you know, put the little jacks under there and yeah, the basic, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. but, um, yeah, those tires ain't cheap. Holy cannoli. Um, I was looking at like the cost of those tires. I bought the two front ones. And I was looking at the back ones and I was like, well, the back ones, that's like Christmas birthday and like every Christian and Jewish holiday combined. I, I don't know, man. That's, that's some money right there. <laughs> But um, my, my eyes will turn off. right. Thank you. Good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to the to, you know, Passover and the, the Easter individuals, uh, happy, happy yeah. and beloved. You know, now I'm going to run some very quick hearing questions with you. And if you're OK with it, I want to ask you some of the saltiest, toughest ones that come up because um, I'm I'm bored and would love to. Are you ready? Good, sir. Do my best. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're wheedling out of it already. I can tell. All right. So, good sir, go ahead and tell me your fake name for this hearing. Uh, Christopher Gatson. Gatson. Mr. Gatson, uh, can you explain to me? Uh, and, and whoa, whoa. Somebody just donated a massive amount. Actually, there were two donations that were massive. The first one was from Combat, which is $50, which is Combat Ready, which is $50. And then this one is pie with a $250 donation which is incredible and i think i know who that is let me see the picture yeah i know who that is that's amazing that's amazing 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 thank you thank you so much for the birthday um and i, I really uh, i really uh, appreciate it april 25th 37 years old um and uh this house this house nearly murdered me i i will be honest we have some videos coming out and i'll kind of explain to everybody what happened with it but thank you so much that's a massive, massive donation. I really appreciate it. That's just incredible um, because I'm so broke right now because that house that house beat up my credit cards. My credit cards are delaminating. My credit cards, one of them I caught crying in my wallet last night. My credit cards look like, you know, they went through a war and they were on the losing side. So just, just to be fair, <laughs> just, just to be fair, if you guys think I'm doing great financially, um, the bank would be like, I don't know if we're going to trust this guy this year. He's got a little bit, but again, to the side note, I do want to thank launch credit union. Uh, if you guys ever, uh, you know, basically want to think like, what's a great group launch credit union, uh, worked with me to make it happen, pulled together everything. They did an amazing job. Um, everything was super streamlined. It was cool. So I, I really got to thank launch, but, um, but, uh, good sir. Are you ready for me to, uh, to grill the heck out of you? Bring your breath best. Oh, oh, those are fighting words. Oh, I feel like I just opened the book to the good page. All right, all right, let's do this. Good sir, walk me through. What are your, I'm just going to give you the easy one starting off. What are your top five most severe disabling conditions? Go ahead. Uh, I've got a lot of issues from a tra traumatic brain injury. I've got neuropathy in both legs. I have several uh, psych-related things that have come out, such as anxiety disorder, OCD, pseudo-valber, disruptive mood that's connected with the uh, brain injury. I've got, uh, I've, for a number of years, I've suffered with what's called intractable migraines. Um, and I've always been treated by a neurologist. I uh, have about 15 to 17 a month of, of pain level and dysfunction of 7 out of 10 or higher. Um, I also have lost 25% of my peripheral vision. Uh, I have vertigo. And um, I, I do have epilepsy, but that seems to be under, under control. Hey, good sir. Talk to me about seizures. When was the last time you had a seizure? Uh, the, uh, two neurologists I see think I may be having them at night, and they they've been increasing my seizure medications, but we haven't been able to to show it on uh, EEG. They're going by what has been witnessed by others. When was the last time you were in a, an emergency room for the seizures? When was the last time you were in a mental facility or sanatorium for multiple days as inpatient for the mental impairments? I, I, I have not, not been. I've been treated by a psychiatrist uh, every six to eight weeks, and I see a 
social worker counselor uh, every two weeks. I've been doing that re regularly. Do you live by yourself? Uh, yes, I have support from a number of friends and family. Okay, gotcha. And uh, do you live in the country? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. What kind of car do you drive? I don't really drive very much. It's just a old Honda Civic in 2015. I keep it, uh, the pharmacy is about three miles from my house and the grocery store is about five miles. And I rely on other people to take me to medical appointments and, and anything more than the three or five miles. I only go on days where I don't have a migraine and I go at quiet, quiet times. I've lived here for over 50 years, so I, I know the area well. And I, I sometimes I just got to, I, I need stuff and I don't always have uh, help from others. Let me ask you this. I mean, how far away is the grocery store? How many miles from where you live? It's uh, just past the pharmacy, maybe three and a half miles. And you drive there on your own, correct? Yeah, about once a week. And you have these eye issues. When was the last time you had a driver's exam uh, where they checked your eyes? Uh, I just saw the ophthalmologist um, the first week of uh, March. Okay. So, but they're not at the they're not at the level where the doctor's recommending that they pull back your license, correct? Yeah, I asked him that, and he said the twenty five percent loss of peripheral is not a not a problem. Okay. Okay, so it's not a problem. Now, let me ask you this: um, when it comes to you know the the mental impairments, what is the number one symptom that limits your ability to go back to work? Just one, um, the, the anxiety with the uh, pa pa panic attacks, I would say. Okay, where'd you used to work? What'd you used to do there? Uh, I was a registered, don't laugh, laugh. I was a reg registered nurse or to a uh, dis developmentally disabled adults in a res residential setting. Okay, now I got to tell you, aside from playing the judge role here, when judges hear that somebody worked with the disabled, um, a lot of people think that that's going to earn them credit with the judge. Instead, a lot of the judges, their brain starts to go, okay, this individual knows what these impairments look like, knows how the symptoms are reflected in actions by those people that they worked with. So, the, you know, th there is that tinge of not being neutral and having this impairment and it just being this thing that they interact with alone but rather you have seen people with this so the next yeah. yeah the next question i would ask as a as a judge is how many years did you spend working with the mentally unsound uh as a nurse i, I have worked i have done mental health nursing in a, in a prison and i and i have worked with developmentally disabled people probably about here and there probably about five years six years maybe Okay. And what drew you together. to that field? Uh, you, you, you know, these are just, these are people that don't have a whole lot go, going for them in life. And a lot of these people didn't, didn't ask for what they got. And a lot of people just don't want to see them. They're blind to, to them. And, uh, I, I, you know, to be honest, I, I, I had a master's in business. I was a business guy and I was a hot shot and it was the sleaziest, most dishonorable work you could do. The money was great, but there was no honor in it. And, um, long time ago, it was in my late thirties. My dad got sick. I was taking care of him and some things happened at, at work. And I said, geez, you know, maybe it's time to do a change in life. And, I had some people I worked with uh, reach out to me about n nursing because they had seen some things. And I, I took a couple of classes at community college and I, I loved it. And I got into the toughest nursing school around. And, um, you, you know, when you're a nurse, you don't work for a doctor or anybody. You're, you're, you're a patient advocate. Your job is to give them a better day and to be their, their, their voice. And I, 
you know, I can't believe I've been on this side of the damn fence now. It sucks. What is your least favorite part of it? Of, of nursing? No, of being disabled and not being able to help those who were disabled back in the day. My whole life I took care of people. Now I'm needing a lot of help from too damn many people, and there's no easy answers, and this shit takes a long time. How did you have to change your house to be able to uh, modify it so that you could still live there with these impairments? Uh, not, not really a whole, whole lot. The, the thing is, about eight years ago, I actually built, built my house and I got divorced. I really built, built it, uh, probably 80 per, 80% of it. And, you know, the joke was, you know, going to get old someday, might, might want a, a 36 inch door instead of a 32. And the, instead of a bathtub thing, I went with a walk-in shower. So a lot of the things were just built into the house the way I did it. Uh, but I, um, I've added things like, you know, like in the bathroom, some grab bar, bars and uh, shower, shower chair, um, you know, things like that. Um, but, uh, uh yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a joke putting these things into the design and the building of it, and I never thought I'd need, need it like this. So, um, fortunately, it's all one floor, and it's just a simple little little place. All right, so instead of attacking you, what I want to do is I want to help you out, because it, to me, you know, look, I get people on here with, with big egos, and they want to, you know, they want to, they want to shoot through the gallery and see what they can get away with and what I can get out of them. And uh, instead, that's not so much you. So here's the things I was going to attack so that you know what to watch out for. So grab a pen and a piece of paper. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was speed limit on the car, speed limit on the roads to specifically the grocery store, to your doctors, distance of locations, things like that. The next thing I wanted to go into uh, had to do with getting dressed and how you dress differently on certain days or whether or not you're able to get dressed on your own and function properly because you said you don't have anybody living with you, but people do assist you. So I wanted to hear about how people assist you with getting dressed. The next thing I wanted to go into was difficulty with basically interacting with things that are three-dimensional, things like stairs, things like chairs, things like you know pulling yourself into a table, Things like, you know, what you're doing with your food. Are you putting it in the right place? Are you putting, you know, the fridge stuff in the fridge, the freezer stuff in the freezer, the cabinet stuff in the cabinet? Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about were, you know, and you said you didn't modify your home. So the way I would attack that is, oh, okay, well, then what procedures do you have that get you through the day? And if you'd come back and say, well, I don't really have procedures, then I'd say, okay, so it's not really bad enough to keep you from having to have a structure that people review. And then of course you'd have to say, well, yeah, I don't have a structure, but I'm able to make it because I've lived here forever. And then in my brain, I'm thinking this is a guy who's just basically living through, you know, a form of mini retirement. You did say it sucked to be in the position you are, but that's not quantifiable and it's subjective. So um, another thing that I wanted to attack on your situation was that you lived in the country, which means we're talking mowing the lawn. We're talking house repair upkeep. We're talking AC brakes, AC filters, all that kind of stuff. So those were additional things that I wanted to attack. Um, Absolutely. Go ahead. Well, no, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop oh. over to the next call, but think about those things because when you have your disability oh. hearing, those things are going to pop up. And, and remember, if you're in the country, that means bottom line, there's no maintenance person coming around pulling the filters and swapping them. There's no, you know, person out there mowing your lawn, very likely. Um, you know, the, the things that bite people are the weed yeah, whacking. My son takes care of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, the big thing is I would attack uh, essentially all the things that are country specific. And, um, you know, I remember I, I would have it within my capacity to look up photos on Facebook and whatever to find photos of you on top of a rider mower. I have that, yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah. But uh, let me do that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. I. I used to do. I got the riding mower, the tractors, and, and all that, and I haven't been on them in over a year. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this is what I would say. Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, um, work on that stuff. You know, use it to your advantage. Uh, I'm gonna pop over to the next call, but uh, yeah, if you have. Okay. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, yeah. But if you have any future questions, don't be afraid to reach out and we'll catch up and kind of we'll keep moving the ball forward, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. And you should know who Gadsden is, Christopher Gadsden. You really should. And you don't, do you? Christopher Gadsden. Uh, let me do a quick search. How do you spell his last name? G A D E D S O N. E D S O N? Yeah, G A D S O N. Oh, you mean the, the South Carolina. Do you, do you mean like the poli- do, do you mean like a recent person? No, like the forming of our nation. The yellow flag with a big snake on it. You know what? I don't know the history of that whole thing. I'll have to I'll have to review it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll don't, definitely don't. the don't tread on me. Yeah, no, I've just seen it all over. I just yeah. don't know the history of it. Yeah. Um <laughs> You know, the, the thing is, too, when people ask me about historical people, it's tough because my brain is cued to like recent news, recent politicians, stuff like that. So when I think about like when somebody's like, hey, you know who said that? My first thinking is, you know, which politician stepped in it today and said the wrong thing two, three years ago? But you're right. I, I should focus on, you know, founding fathers, you know. But, you know, the thing that always gets me are the vice presidents. Because the vice presidents say some of the dumbest crap that you could ever imagine. And then it somehow hinders that president. Uh, at least, uh, let me point out, um, as you know, our current president, while he was the vice president to Obama, stuck his foot in his mouth quite a few times during Obama's presidency. So, you know, uh, you know but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm going to take the next call, good sir. Yeah, but you have a wonderful night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, good yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep. Yep. Hi, we are live on YouTube. Would you like me to answer a specific question or would you like me to run hearing questions with you? And please remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Jenny, and um, I just wanted to ask a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I was one of those people who was – Deemed disabled, like without a, I didn't need a lawyer. I didn't have a review. Yeah. But so I don't. I was wondering at one point in one of your things, you mentioned there was a form I could request to find out exactly what I was deemed disabled for. Yeah, sure. Um, and I was wondering if you know the name of that form. Oh, I mean, you could just you could call them or, and ask the local field office what you were found disabled for. They'll go to your ALJ decision or your DDS decision page or your DDE. And they'll look it into look into it, and it's going to be one of four things. It's either going to be a compassion allowance listing, a uh, regular listing level uh, allowance. You know, you me- meet equal or exceed uh, one of their pre-designed, pre-listed impairments, or it's going to be a grid out. That's where you fit into the stat. Well, how old are you currently? Um, forty-three, and I think it was actually for a. Um, the thing is, when I uh, applied, I had all kinds of, and I still do crazy physical disabilities that prevent me from functioning, but also a whole bunch of mental illness stuff. And I'm pretty sure because I did get a CDR review when I was like too old to even function huh? and somehow we managed to get through it. They wanted me to see their doctor, but it wasn't gonna, I, I couldn't go there. So they did this thing where they all talked to each other. I forget what it was. And my mom, like, Somehow I was able to pass that review, but I'm just trying to determine because you had said there were rules based on each thing. And so I don't know if they're watching me based on if they were to watch me, if it would be based on all the things that I said when I applied for disability or the effective disorder. I think it was an effective disorder that they deemed me disabled for. So here's the deal. When you're under 50, grid outs aren't on the table. Um, I know that you're probably not a compassion allowance listing because I'm not hearing the signs over the phone that I normally hear from a person with those impairments. You could have one, but it's low, low because that's extreme, extreme limitation, um, which means extreme pain, extreme mental incapacity, ex- you know, complete and utter blindness. Um, so what I would put you into is either a vocational allowance or a listing level. Um, can you tell me what are your top five impairments? Um, I have, um, something called mast cell activation syndrome, where Mm -hmm. when I come into contact with other humans, I can have an anaphylactic reaction Mm -hmm. to anything in in an instant. 
fragrance is too strong, if they have cigarettes. And so I can't be around other people without like wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask long before the recent events in our sure, country. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it causes extraordinary anxiety and it's connected and it has to do with brain inflammation. So basically I have all these migrating symptoms so if I, I have that as well as dysautonomia, postural orthotics, POTS, like I have trouble, I faint, I, if I don't take, I have to literally spend every moment of every day, I have to take medications like at least every two hours. Mm-hmm. I've been like, I have to eat extraordinarily special food. I, I can, I can finally get through the day now. But like it's taken so long, and by by get through the day, I mean I order my groceries, and I maybe get out of the house like once or twice a week. I sure. have twice a twice a week I talk to my therapist, and once a month I talk to my psychiatrist. But I don't go out if I ever have doctor's appointments. I have to go with someone else because I need someone to help protect me. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm if I get into a, a um. I, it may sound strange, but when you have an anaphylactic reaction, it messes with your brain. Oh, yeah. Prefrontal cortex stops working. Yeah. So if you can't explain that to someone, then having an advocate, I've gotten in trouble. I've had actually was like, they've actually brought me into an institution because they thought I was having a delusional episode and it was really anaphylaxis. And then I had to be in there for like four days. So I think I have a whole lot of stuff about continues to keep me like because I'm doing all this stuff and I think my but anyway my point is just that like are they when I first got sick I also had Lyme disease and I could barely walk and now I can walk okay and now I can do all these like some physical things a lot better than I'm supposed to for my mental health get exercise and all those things but now since I've been listening to your videos I'm just want to be conscientious you're worried yeah yeah I'm worried yeah and since I'm also in that age group, I've been for since about 10 years. So here's what you're really asking me. How, what type of disability approval did I receive? Listing is better, but you sound like a vocational allowance. And that's Sweetie in the background, who, who's a professional complainer and whiner. Um, and basically, oh, she's so, she's so salty. Look at her little salty face. And then um, what you want is you want to hear listing level approval because – you know, that, that, that's just a better finding for you. But, you know, and vocational allowance is kind of the weakest form of a disability approval. That's where they take all your impairments and say, yeah, they probably couldn't work a, a nine to five. Um, so the, the bottom line is um, you can call them up, ask them if you have a listing level approval or if you have basically a, uh, a, a vocational allowance. You're not going to be a grid. You don't sound like the level of, uh, of a, a, a compassion allowance listing. You might be. I don't know your full record, but um, bottom line is uh, you're either going to be a listing realistically or a vocational allowance. And as a result of that, um, you know, look, even if you're a vocational allowance, they're looking for continuous repetitive medical treatment. And the other thing you need to go research, because we don't have enough time to go through it tonight, is the eight step sequential process, because that is your blueprint, your elements for whether or not you will be able to retain disability benefits either on your old list of things you were found disabled for, or whether or not, you know, if those fail the tests, whether or not your new impairments uh, will be enough uh, to essentially hold you as disabled going forward. Okay. And as I, so I, there was a totally different field office because I lived in a different state when I was deemed disabled. So I just go to the one local to where I am now. Yeah, you could go to the local one where you're at now. Um, you know, they all look up the same, you know, system. So, um, you know, I can and be- call. yeah, I, can I call? yeah, you can call. Actually too to go in. But if you get the 800 okay. people, like the 800 number people, they don't know much. They don't know much. So make sure you get through to the local field office. If you can't get through to the local field office, you're probably going to have to go down there because the, the, the 800 number people, their famous phrase is, we don't know and we don't have access to that information. Okay. I just want to thank you so much yeah, for yeah. everything you do. And you've opened my eyes. I was one of those people who was like, I just got approved. I have no idea why or how it was like within a month. 
So I just want to say that, like, your information that you've given me uh, about all this stuff has been really helpful, and um, I just appreciate your advocacy so much. Thank you. Thank you for... Uh, for being a part of the show, you know, somebody has your question and the beautiful thing about this channel is that um, we all get to kind of, you know, fumble around and figure out the answers. And, um, and uh, I, I, I always love when people come in with, with tough questions, like, and that one's a tough question. What type of finding did I receive? And as a result of that, how will that affect my ultimate CDR? You know, will it be easy for them to deny me? and take my benefits away or difficult for them? So, I mean, that's that's a great question. It's an amazing question. I, I should do a bigger video on that specifically. I tell you what, email me um, tomorrow or whenever, and I'll, and I'll put it on the list of things I need to do a video about because that is something that has absolutely zero answers online about each type of decision and specifically what are the weaknesses with that decision for future CDRs. So that amazing, amazing question. Thank you for that, you know? Oh, um, my pleasure. I'm so glad that I was able to bring it up, but I will email you. Perfect. Thank you, and have a great evening. You, I'm glad to be part of the show. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. So, guys, I want to just real quick say thank you, thank you, thank you, to and the mega donators, mega, mega donators, uh, L-L-L-M-M-M, -M -M, um, donated $50, super pair, rockin', Rocking the, <laughs> rocking the city. I super appreciate it. Um, I just saw uh, Positively Cheyenne popped in. That's very cool. Uh, she's recently been taking uh, her eldest son around all these different basketball courts. And I see the person calling him right now. She recently took her eldest son to all these different basketball courts, drove him around, which is absolutely incredible. A level of dedication to her son that I haven't seen. Um, let me go ahead real quick and uh, basically pop onto this caller. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. You're probably going to be the last call of tonight. Uh, remember to use a fake name throughout this process. Would you like me to answer a specific question, or uh, would you like me to go ahead and run hearing questions with you? Go ahead. I, I had a, a, a function uh, report dropped off at the end. Now, I think I filled one out initially when I originally entered, uh, and now it's been over 345 days, and I've got another function paper. Uh, and again, I had called him uh, last week, and you give me a whole bunch of good information, which I really appreciate. But I'm just trying to find out if they're just trying to stump me, or or how does this function need to go down? Because I called my uh, regular lawyer, and they gave me a wait period of like 13 days before they get back with me to go through with it. Mm -hmm. So this is the 3373, correct? Yes. All right. There's a video I made. Did you watch the video on the 3373? I have not. I'll go back and look. I've watched a lot of your videos, so I will actually go back and see if I can find it. Go look for that video. I'll see if I can find the link. Um, I don't see it right when I when I scroll for it. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of other attorneys that did a video on it, but mine was very, very in-depth, like question by question, answer by answer um, in-depth. So um, what I would say is this, um, go go take a look and, um, oh, here it is. I found it. Uh, let's see. Best way to fill it. Yeah, this one. I spent a lot of time. That was a 43-minute, 44-minute video where I went through every single question, what to watch out for, what to understand, all that stuff. I'm going to put that into... Uh, the link in the chat section. That way, when you go back and look at this video, uh, right around 48 minutes, 48 minutes and 30 seconds, you'll see the link in the chat section. But um, basically, um, go check out that video because that that question by question is going to walk you through it. Yes, they look for inconsistencies and in statements between forms. Yes, they look for modified modified answers that show improvement. Yes, they look for things that are included with this new form. That basically open a can of worms as to, well, when did you get the dog? Oh, when did you start, you know, <clears throat> driving out of the state? You know, stuff like that. So all the above, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my main questions that I have as far as driving. I've got a shattered clavicle. I've had both uh, a bilateral knee replacement. I had a stroke, uh, which created an issue with my left eye. Uh, I've had, you know, just a whole lot of medical issues in the last four years. Um, and again, like I said, things had changed from the initial time that I filled out the form. And now it seems like I've known more 
So I don't know exactly what I needed to say or what I didn't need to say, uh, but I do drive. Uh, you know, I, I listened to you a minute ago talking about the young man, uh, but my impairment doesn't really affect driving. I do have a lot of pain. I, I feel I, I have, I'm on pain management because of the pain that I'm dealing with. Uh, so, again, I really appreciate everything you do and, and all the great advice you give. Absolutely. Well, excellent. Good, sir. I will catch you a little bit later. You have a wonderful night. And uh, if you have any questions at all, reach out to us. Um, and uh, when it comes to those questions, just watch out for the medication side effects section. Make sure you go into detail there. And then when it comes to paying attention slash focusing questions, make sure you detail why you have difficulty focusing with both oral and written uh, directions. Uh, go into detail on those because they are important for the hearing. Yeah. Awesome. Is there a better time to call you? I mean, obviously you're wide open, and I, I see you working on your house, you're working on these videos, you're helping uh, the combat vets, and I really appreciate it. And I'm, when, when I start getting some money in, I will definitely donate to the cause because you are awesome. Well, thank uh, you. Yeah. And, but is there a good time to call you in the, in the daytime other than this? I, you know, I would say this. I've got to catch up all of the claims that you know. I, I kind of. I did. So what I did was while I was doing the house stuff, I wrote all the briefs, I wrote all the motions ahead of time and submitted them. But then that little personal touch of me watching it as it goes down the timeline, I didn't have that. So I'm playing like catch up right now with those. If you give me like a week, although you got to get that 3373 in quickly. So what I would say is this, if you run across a question that's particularly difficult for you, shoot the law firm a text message um, with an image of the question, what you put <clears throat> and a little question at the bottom of that image. And I can go ahead from there and shoot you back a quick text. Awesome young man. And again, we appreciate yeah. everything you do. And just as soon as I can donate, I will definitely be one of your highest fans. That's for sure. Appreciate Thank you. you do. Thank you. Good sir. We'll have a wonderful, wonderful night and uh, I'll catch you in the near future. All right. Thank you very much. Have you also have a wonderful and blessed night. Thank you. Good sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So um, that's the final call that I'm going to take for the night. I want to thank everybody that mega donated. Um, just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, we've got LLLMMM, uh, which is incredible, incredible $50 donation. Uh, we, we scroll up to the real biggie, which was the uh, Pi $250 donation, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, because li literally, guys, this is helping getting me back on track. Um, and then we also had the combat uh, donation for $50. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, let me go to the comments real quick. See if there's any comments in here. Um, uh, let's see real quick. Uh, let's see. Positively Cheyenne. Uh, da, 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 da. yes, yes. Um, there's a lot of VA vets that want to basically use my, you know, disability system because you know, you know me, I have the 10 level system. I've totally, outmatch this massive system of questions and claim building and forms. So we've started to go ahead and work more with VA vets um, and uh, begin the process of doing that. Um, as you know, uh, also that side of the field helps, you know, pay more because disability attorneys in the civilian side just don't make much at all. Um, that's, that's uh, the unfortunate thing about it. That's one of the things that bugs me too, because Disabled people need more legal help than most individuals. They, they just do, because think about it. The faculties of the individual are limited in some way, fashion, or form, whether they're blind, physical, or, or, or mental impairments. And so it, it, it's tough in that regard. And unfortunately, there's a lot of crap attorneys in the, uh, in the civil disability field as well. I mean, I've worked with a lot of disability attorneys, but there's a high percentage of crap disability attorneys out there. And I'm not sure... I have my theories as to why it evolved that way, how it got that way, et cetera. But uh, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a shame. It's a, it's a bad shame. But anyways, guys, um, I will catch up with you in the not too distant future. Um, tomorrow, however, I won't be doing videos. I'll be editing the videos for combat Craig um, because I owe him videos at this point. I've owed him videos for like two, three months. This house thing just sucked up my time um, because I've never really, restored a house like this house with the problems that this house had. I mean, every function had a problem. So we had lots of contractors. We had all the skilled people I knew, people that wanted to help me out and come and help me basically get the AC thing fixed or the, get these you know outlets changed out or whatever. 
So a lot of individuals. Now it's a really cool house though. The, out, the outlets have like the, the newer outlets where you can put the USB regular and the USB-C in them. It's just really cool stuff, really cool stuff. So um, it's got a brand new kitchen in it, uh, which uh, that was actually a mom helped me out with that one with the donation. Uh, it was like a, like a gift. Uh, because there was no way I could afford to put a new kitchen in the house. And she popped in there and made that happen. So I was really happy about that. And then a car, of course, launch for making the uh, the ultimate, um, you know, uh, funding, the loan for the funds. I really got to thank Launch, uh, their credit union. They did an amazing job. Um, and this is going to be literally my future. This is going to be the landscape by which I have something to retire on, which is just really awesome because my entire life I've been stifled with these student loans and I still am stifled with them. I just... You know, but anyways, guys, I will catch you a little bit later. Um, I hope all is well. Tipa, give me a call tomorrow, please. And um, Positively Cheyenne, give me a call tomorrow. Um, and look, guys, if you get a chance, please remember to thank the moderator. Um, she spends this time, you know, responding to comments, being quick on her feet, you know, catching little things. I can't watch all the chat while I'm doing these things. So I just wanted to say real quick, and I think it's incredibly important. Um, you know, bottom line is, uh, please remember to thank the moderator. She works very hard and, uh, and please remember to thank sweetie who has barked through about one to 2% of the show. And she's right here and she's complaining and she's so spoiled and she's never known a bad day in her life. In fact, she's had two bully sticks already. What do you have to say? No, you tell me, what do you have to say? You chubby dog? Come on, come on, fluffy. You can't climb. Got too much weight in the front of you? I know. It happens to me, too. Ooh. I will catch you guys later. You have a wonderful night, and we will go from there. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. I know.